Welcome back, Pioneer fans, and thank you for joining us for the second report of the Shoe Sports Report. I'm Aaron Burrell, and joining me today is Diana Canazero. Diana, now you spent the past weekend at Campus Field watching a dominating performance from the football team, did you not? Yes, I did. It sure was a dominating uh, shoe notched a convincing win for the 2016 season while commemorating the anniversary of one of our nation's greatest tragedies. The Pioneers had their home opener on Saturday, September 10th, hosting Valparaiso during Heroes Homecoming, a tribute to the first responders who lost their lives on 9-11 and for those that continue to serve and protect our community. Saturday, the Pioneers had special patriotic helmets designed in their honor. Sacred Heart paid their respects to all local first responders from Bridgeport, Trumbull, and Fairfield. Those who attended were celebrated during the coin toss. Fans and athletes came together on this tough day as we all remember the tragic events that happened 15 years ago. Then it was time for the players to put their helmets on and play some football, which the Pioneers did in, imp in an impressive fashion. Shu put seven points on the board, but Valparaiso quickly answered with a touchdown of their own. The Pioneers would then take back and hold the lead for the rest of the game. Let's dive into some highlights to give you a closer look at the action. All right, so we're going to go in the first quarter. RJ Noel is going to fake it to O.C. Emo Paria, and he's going to run right into the end zone. But Valpo is going to quickly tie up the game. Shu fights back to stay ahead, 14-7, to now going into the second quarter. RJ Noel is going to hand it off to Emo Paria, who won Player of the Week last week as he had a game-winning touchdown, and he clearly is trying to live up to the expectations of being that top player for this week. 28 to 7. Valpo's going to try and come back here, but watch closely. It's going to get tipped off by Tamaric Wilson and picked up by Kamal Whitaker. We're going to go right into the fourth quarter. Shoe's going to have a heavy lead, and Sacred Heart defense is sure unstoppable as they get a total of five sacks versus Valparaiso. Final score 42 to 14, improving to 2 and 0 on the season. The Pioneers will host Marist, Marist College this Saturday for Alumni Weekend at 5 p.m. Well, there will be more on that later when Kara talks with head football coach Mark Nofrey in our Coach's Corner. For now, I'll hand it over to Aaron to fill us in on what's been going on in women's soccer. Yeah, Dee, time for a little update on the sport the rest of the world calls football. Fresh off their trip to Virginia, the Shoe women's soccer team was on the road again, this time to New Jersey to face St. Peter's. The Pilots picked up their second win of the season when junior Kim McNally scored in the 69th minute. Her goal came when freshman Olivia Crema played a good ball in off a corner kick that McNally was able to get her head on to score the game's only goal. This was McNally's first goal of the season and it gave Crema her second assist of her debut campaign as a Pio, while sophomore Nicole Sambuco made seven saves against the Peacocks for her second shutout of the season. Two days later on Sunday, Shu welcomed Ivy League opponents Columbia to Campus Field for their home opener and fans were treated to a double overtime game between the Pios and the Lions. We're going to pick this one up. Emma Anderson is going to get the first shot from the top of the box. Sambuco is going to dive and save. She is off to a good start. Rachel Alexander gets on the end of this cross, but Sambuco is there to save again to the second half. Carlisle Topping is going to get on the end of this through ball, but it is cleared by freshman Ron O'Hara as she calmly plays out of the back. To the first overtime we go. Olivia Crema is going to take her free kick. She gets it up and over the wall, but she cannot get it to drop. It goes out for a goal kick. Melanie De Silva is going to find Miranda Gibbons, but her off-balance shot here is saved. The Pioneers applying the pressure early in overtime. But in the second overtime, Emma Anderson is going to cross this to Holly Neshat, who knocks it down at the back post. And Madeline Lind is going to poke it home, a heartbreaking end to the game. The Pioneers fall to Columbia. The women's soccer team will be back in action on the 21st when they head up to Rhode Island to play Brown. Now I'll pass it along to Katie as she walks us through another eventful weekend in shoe athletics. An eventful weekend it certainly was, Aaron. We had a full slate of games across all of our fall sports. The women's field hockey team was down 5 to nothing by Hofstra on Friday night, followed by a really tough loss to Holy Cross on Sunday. The Pioneers led the Crusaders in the first half with one goal scored by Kelsey Hopkins. They sadly would not find the net again for the rest of the game and were unable to combat Holy Cross's second half comeback and ended up falling 2-1. to one. They will continue their season with an away game at Brown on Friday and a home game against Dartmouth bright and early on Sunday at 10.30.
The men's cross country team participated in the UMass Minutemen Cross Country Invitational this weekend. University of Virginia transfer Connor Raj placed second overall in the men's 6K race, running it in 19 minutes and 3 seconds. Rookie Joshua Hattity was the Pioneer's second finisher, placing 19th overall with a time of 19 minutes and 44 seconds. Sacred Heart would finish the meet in sixth place, and they will head to the 39th annual Fairfield University Victor F. Lieber Cross Country Invitational this Saturday, starting at 10 a.m. The men's golf team tied for seventh at this weekend's Ryan T. Lee Memorial Intercollegiate at Hot Meadow Country Club. Tom DeAndrea would be the team's top finisher, tying for 14th with five over par. He shot a 78 in round one on Saturday, but bounced back on Sunday shooting a 71. Pioneer Golf finished plus 33 in the tournament, tying with Bentley and sitting seven strokes behind Fairfield, who finished in sixth place. She will be back on the links on September 19th for the Hartford Hawks Invitational at Bullbridge Country Club. The women's rugby team would notch their first win of the season at Castleton, defeating the Spartans 45-10. In the first half, both teams would fight for the lead with Castleton scoring first and the Pioneers quickly responding with a try of their own. Castleton's Kaylee Daniels would score again, putting the Spartans up 10-7. However, the Pioneers regained and held the lead for the rest of the match, scoring 24 consecutive points with three tries by Charlotte Tallman, a pair of tries for Kaylee Hale, and a try from Ali Rinaldi. Sonny Raver would score the final try of the game, assisted by Tallman giving the Pioneers a comfortable lead and securing the victory on the road. The Ruggers improved their record to 1-1 one one this past weekend as they head to Westchester University for a game this Saturday at noon. Women's Tennis opened their fall season this weekend, hosting the Shoe Doubles Invitational Tournament this Sunday, finishing the tournament with 10 wins. Freshman Adrian Alfonso, Maggie Glynn, Brianne Loria, and Nicole Vassale all collected their first collegiate wins. They will continue their fall tournament schedule September 16th at the Quinnipiac Invitational. That's all from me today, so I'll go ahead and send it on back to Diana for the recap of this weekend's women's volleyball tournament. The women's volleyball team had a series of matches this past weekend as they participated in a tournament at Fairfield University. The first match was held on Friday with the Pioneers facing in-town rival and host Fairfield. Sacred Heart easily swept the Stags three sets to none as Sarah Krufka and Michaela Dole led the team with 10 kills each. Later in the day, Shu faced Villanova, which had an opposite turnout. Losing three sets to none, they came up just shy of a victory each time with a score of 25 to 23 in all three sets. The final matchup was on Saturday versus James Madison. Sacred Heart's offense was led by Michaela Dole, who had 16 kills for the day. Sarah Krufka had 17 kills, giving her a hitting percentage of 333. Julia Morawinski made an impact on defense with five block assists and a solo block, alongside Anna Gonzalez, who had 16 digs for a shoe. The Pios were downed in three sets to their one, giving James Madison the win and leaving the Pioneers with a 1-2 record for the tournament. Well, at the end of the two-day tournament, Sarah Krufka and Michaela Dole earned spots on the all-tournament team. That wasn't the only honor Krivko would get after a stellar weekend that saw her hit 407 and average 4.03 kills per set. On Monday, the senior earned her first NEC Player of the Week award for the season. Well, they will have another opportunity to improve as they head to the University of New Hampshire on September 16th to face Idaho, New Hampshire, and Holy Cross. And now we'll take a closer look at Pioneer football with Kara as she interviews Coach Nofri in this week's Coach's Corner. Kara? Thanks, Diana. Welcome, Coach Nofri, to come to Shoe Sports Report. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So you're off to a great start this season, uh, sitting at 2-0 and um, after Saturday's win over Valpo. Um, can you talk a little bit about those wins and how carrying that momentum um, has helped this team throughout the season? Uh, well, starting on the road down in uh, Florida against Stetson, it was a good test for us for the first game of the year. You know, we were down 14, six and a half, and uh, you know, really weren't playing that well. And uh, the kids kind of found their way at halftime, made some adjustments, and came out the second half and got us a win. You know, in a hard-fought game, you know, with the heat and everything. And uh, for being on the road first game of the year, I thought they did a great job. Uh, and anytime you win, whether it's pretty or not, it's a win. Yeah. Um, the kids showed a lot of character. So going into this past week versus Valparaiso, being at home for the first time. Uh, one o'clock start. I thought our kids were excited about it. We we made great gains between the first game and the second game, and uh, like I said, they played real well. Uh, a few little things that we can always improve on, but um, real happy by the way they produced uh, 
this past Saturday versus Valparaiso. Awesome. You've now had back-to-back -back NEC Defensive Players of the Week, from Kevin Barry to CJ Parvelis. I know we ask you this every year, but what makes the defense tick and continue to have success year after year? Well, I think number one uh, is we got the right kind of kid. You know, we got a kid that really likes to play the game, uh, more like a football junkie, we refer to him. Uh, and both those kids are great kids. I mean, they work hard in the weight room, you know, in the classroom, on the field, they're leaders, they were voted, you know, captains by their peers. And uh, I think Coach Wisman does a great job with them along with Coach Cook, you know. They got a good repertoire going, you know, they're, they're constantly being coached. Uh, they know where to draw the line. They have a good relationship with the coach and staff. Coach Wiss puts them in a great position to succeed and, and Coach Cook makes sure they know their assignments and they play hard for them, you know. And, and I think part of it is uh, defensively, you know, the attitude that Coach Wiss has created and the defensive coaches, uh, that those two buy into it. And when the rest of the team sees those two produce and, and give the intensity and know what they're doing all the time, they, they kind of feed off of those two. And uh, when you got your two linebackers that are players of the week in the first two weeks, that's a great thing going for us right now. It's great to have those two leaders. Um, being a recent graduate myself, I'm super excited about this weekend. It's homecoming weekend, so it's going to be a lot of energy. Um, what is your team, how's your team going to operate with all that energy? Are they, they excited? Um, how do you think this, this weekend is going to um, help out your team? Well, you know, around? when you, you have big crowds, you know, for homecoming, yeah. usually parents weekend, and uh, anytime our kids come out, you know, the, in pregame or right before the start of the game and they see the stands full and you know, a lot of red and white out there and, and being loud and things. Our kids feed off of that. You know, it's, I think it's a tremendous effort for the community, the school, all the support that we've been getting from other sports teams, the student body, uh, the administration. And it means a lot to our players. I know it means a lot to myself and the coaches uh, that we have that much support. And, uh, you know, when you win, even more people tend to come out and see you. But uh, it's gone a long way in the last three years. It's come, you know, like I said, it's come a long way. And, uh, we enjoy it and the kids feed off of that. So hopefully this Saturday there'll be a packed house again and you know our team will perform well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to see the team play. Um, another thing I'm excited for is that this Saturday we get to see a brand new video board um, in action. What does this um, addition to the field and this whole organization um, mean to you and your program? Well, it means that you know the administration and the school is making a great commitment to the football program and the other sports here. I mean, uh, two years ago we got a brand new locker room last year. We got a brand new turf field and this year's the scoreboard so each year you know coach valentine's doing a great job you know promoting athletics here and, and trying to push the envelope and, and understand that we need to continue to grow and keep up with other schools and and uh, make our mark in the northeast conference and uh, like i said the administration is behind us and when you see things like that each year improvements it, it makes it you know good for our kids they feel great about it and uh, it's good to see that the school's behind you and they're willing to you know, keep pushing that envelope to make sure we continue to grow and get better each year. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for being here thank today. You. Let's send it back to you guys at the desk. Well, thanks, Cara. That's all we have for today's Shoe Sports Report. For Aaron Burrell, Cara Levine, Katie Sullivan, and myself, Diana Canizaro, we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, everyone.